Rick Walland here. This is episode number six, and today I'm joined by Dom and Sam, who run their own podcast series called Bad Music, Taste, and Other Ways to Ruin Your Life. Well, thank you guys for coming on the show, my new show, and you are the Bad Music, Taste, and would you like to introduce yourselves and tell me a little bit about the the podcast that you do? Sure. Um, yeah, we started the podcast, um, like, like seven or eight months ago in April, basically just because we were bored, I guess. Mm. Um, Sam was like, uh, we should pay homage to Wayne's world. We should do something like that. We'll dress up like Wayne and Garth. And, um, like the first, like we, we asked our friend to do it. And we were like, we're going to dress up like Wayne and Garth. Like, oh, sounds great. And we were about to hop on the, on the Zoom call. We're like, yeah, never mind. No. Mm. And our, our, our friends got super into it. So we started reaching out to, like, musicians and people that, like, like I don't know, things that people might actually watch guests that people might actually watch so um and it just went from there mm. yeah so, i mean everybody I, I feel like people definitely enjoyed you know just like it was our friends because when we were first starting the only people who were listening were also our friends mm. but it, it was kind of like as the podcast grew a little bit we decided to like widen the variety just because it was a good idea to start with our friends because it was a lot less you know anxiety inducing but from there i know like our first actual musician guest was jr from less than jake so like that was just a cool experience because we later actually got to interview him again and like i guess get redemption for it <laughs> yeah because mm, mm. we we watched it again and uh it was like like desert island questions <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i think that's the, the thing it's you you want to you want to create podcasts that you know your listeners will actually want to listen to you know it's not a i guess for yeah. me it was the same it was like uh had a couple of my friends on at the beginning but i'm like do people actually just want to hear me and my friend talking like it's not you know it's not that interesting so it's like i've got to think about something what people actually want to listen to you know kind yeah. of polish it i guess the the concept so still working on it but what about the 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 name then because that's, that's interesting bad music taste and other ways to ruin your life what's that all uh, about I'll, <laughs> I'll let i'll let i'll let sam answer. yeah so basically we were just talking like at the point where we thought like we kind of realized we wanted it to be our own thing so we were like well we need a name obviously you know like, we need to start with that mm. so we were just kind of texting back and forth like well we can go far with music we thought that would be really cool um so like I there's a lot started... there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So music we just... <laughs> very right. broad so we i know um dominic would say stuff like oh well like bad music ruins your life or like something like that and like i'd like add it on to it i was like bad music taste in other ways to ruin your life and it's like i just popped out of my head i was like this is the perfect creation <laughs> yeah i like it so it's a bit edgy but did you have any other names for your podcast or was, was it pretty much pulled that one out of the hat and yeah, it was like, we need a name. And then that came and we were like, perfect. Yeah, we were like, that works, you know, like, yeah. I that's guess, a name. Right. Like we didn't spend <laughs> as, as much time on it as I think like the name itself, like reads like we would have, mm. but I think that was it was just like that's not horrible let's just get started you know like yeah. we, we didn't really want to wait to find something like perfect so yeah <laughs> and what about the 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 artwork then because that's pretty cool it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the fugazi album cover oh so. well we needed a thumbnail for our first video so i went into paint oh, and like classic. slab something together <laughs> like that works it's great. Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> like everything was based off of. All right. Just, that works. Just give it a go. 
<laughs> yeah, and then we we had um, the Run DMC logo for a second. Yeah. yeah. Was... What do you enjoy the most about doing the podcast? Then I mean, I guess the people that you get on and stuff. And right now, because it you've been doing it for like six months, what how what do you enjoy about doing the the podcasts? Well, during the pandemic, it gives something to look forward to because mm. we, we've been on like a winter break from like school and the podcast and everything. Yep. So um, like I, I've been bored, mm. <laughs> like our next interview isn't for like a week or two. And like there's like then we have that to look forward to. But before we booked that one it was like. Like, what else is there to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know since we've started, it's definitely become more of, like, a like a main thing. It's, like, being able to talk to people, you know, during the pandemic, just to get the perspective on that, let alone just having access to more things now by doing it virtually, I think has been really interesting. interesting. And it makes for, like, good content to be able to just hear people's perspectives on everything. And, like, it, just how much we've accomplished, I guess, is really interesting. <laughs> what about um the guests then i mean it from what i from what i can see that they, they tend to be like so far it's been like people from like a kind of punk punk background or bands like fairly successful punk bands um how do you go about picking the guests just people that um, you admire i suppose um yeah pretty much and we talked about this uh with 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 moby he he was like, why do you only have punk guests? Like, we try not to limit ourselves yeah. to like only punk, yeah. but that's what's like accessible. <laughs> <That's, Yeah. laughs> like you don't have to go through press people. Most out of the most of the time, you can send them like an Instagram DM, and and they'll be cool about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not like we put that label on it, you know? It's not like we'd be opposed to Like, we're a punk rock podcast. Like, mm. Right. Like, we, we still don't say that. Exactly. Like, we didn't do that. It's just, like Dom said, they're, they're kind of accessible in a way that it's, you know, less going through people to get to somebody, like, to ask. If yeah. 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 And that, that was just, like, a good basis to start, I think. And, like, mm -hmm. we've, I mean, we've interviewed a lot of great people. And we've had yeah. Yeah. Lot of great perspective. Yeah, a few a few months ago we um we reached out to Doug Carry on. Oh cool. And uh you'll have you'll have to tell me a bit about who he is because I'm not Oh uh he was in he was the bassist for the descendants, uh Dag Nasty. Now he plays in uh Field Day. Right, I need to check these bands out then. I've heard of Descendants, yeah. 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 I'm not and... totally clueless, I do, you know, I've got I've got some background in uh, <laughs> punk rock and hardcore punk and stuff. But, yeah. But yeah, he was on he was on the podcast and afterwards, like once the interview came out, it was like, no way, he posted about it. And then yeah. he was like That's he amazing. sent us an yeah. yeah, he sent That's... an Instagram DM and he was like, Send me a list of fifteen people that you want to have on your podcast. It was like Whoa. There's a gateway, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And um we like put a bunch of people on the list. He reached out to him and all throughout that day, he was like, this person said, yes, this person said, yes, this person said, yes, here's their email. Here's their email. Here's their email. Like eight people within like two hours. Maybe. Yeah. Like, it was insane. Like well, we were doing all right before them, but I feel like that was so like, just, like that was like, <laughs> like, whoa, we can, we can network on this. That's right. insane. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was the first experience with that, so it was like, whoa, mm -hmm. like, you're just helping us? And all we did was interview him? <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. it, like, it happened again where somebody was like, oh, well, who do you want me to reach out to? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, that's amazing. So, and that's how we do that most of the time, like, get certain guests on. I think um, that's the beauty of, of that, I suppose, that kind of music that the people are very yeah. much like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not got a big ego, you know, I'm, I'm just like, you guys yeah, I, are doing something really cool. I want to, you know, I want to put, put something into it. I want to make, put some input into it. So. Yeah. Again, like going back to the accessible thing, 
like you can't like reach out to somebody from your favorite band and be like oh can you get us uh like this big ass celebrity on mm. but um <laughs> So. It's gonna, it's gonna change everything. I think, like watching Joe Rogan stuff, um, he's. It seems like he's got a. He's just kind of got. He's tapped into. You can pretty much get anyone on the show now, uh, but it's like a broad spectrum of. Yeah, and he's very he's high profile like, names, you know. Yeah, and he still had like, like smaller people on, like John Joseph from the Chromags and like Henry Rollins. Yeah. So when I mean like they're not the like the smallest people ever, but at the same time he's had like Tony Hawk on and people like that. Yeah. Like Steve O, so Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As when I when I actually contacted Ian the first time, my dissertation tutor actually said to me, Why don't you just email like Discord Records and just ask him to do, you know, for an interview? I was like it's a good idea. So I so I emailed him, and then like two days later, he replied. I was like, "Yeah, I'm up for it." I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't believe it. But that's when what we're talking about people from this kind of uh, this t- kind of scene. Um, there, there's no ego, so they're just happy to, you know, do do whatever they can to to support. And I think it's the right message to send. Um, yeah. Like I, I, I emailed him and it had been like a couple of days, so I like lost hope on it. Mm. And um I was like sitting at my kitchen table and I like jumped up. I was like, I just screamed, Ian Mackay. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just like that the group of people, like I never knew talked to just been really welcoming about everything, you know, like nobody we, we've had a couple like interesting experiences, but it's been very rarely that people were like, ah, oh, they're cute. You know what I mean? Like, it's definitely had its moments, but it hasn't been like, you know, every time we talk to somebody, they're like, man, I have to do this. You know what I mean? Like, people actually enjoy it, and they give us what they've given anyone else. So, like, yeah. yeah, and if we've had those experiences where people are like, they're just kids, so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, so, what kind of music do you guys like, then? Because we're talking a lot about the kind of punk and stuff. I mean, obviously, you um, must have had some interest yeah. in, in that kind of music to, to, to start doing. Yeah, I, like, like my parents were into, into punk music, so I would, like, hear it in the car. So that's what I was, like, raised with. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Y- yeah, punk music, just... Yeah, I mean, I... I kind of am a little bit more all over the place. <laughs> I mean, like, I definitely listen to, like, a good amount of punk, but I'll go to, like, just basic alternative and, like, pop punk and, like, kind of go in circle with that. But it's it's been interesting. I've definitely learned more and gotten more involved with punk rock, like, as we've continued the podcast, just because it's, it's like... The first couple interviews we do with people, I would be like just like a little bit like nodding along and like trying to remember everything. But now it's like I know who they're talking about. Like I know that band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask a little bit because obviously I guess you guys are, are friends. Like, uh, you 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 yeah. li- you both live in Baltimore. Is there is there like a scene there? Do you know much about? Uh, I mean. Any bands that any, bands, you know about? Yeah, I mean, bands will come by Baltimore. Um, yeah. There are, a, like, a couple good bands from, from here. But, um, I mean, anywhere is going to have a scene. I just don't know if, like, ours is as big of a scene. or is, Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say Maryland's like a hot shot for it, you know what I mean? But mm. there's a big say, ska scene. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, and th- th- there's a lot of great bands that come out of here, you know, but it's like, it's not all necessarily to one genre like that. Like, I wouldn't say it's like anything to travel for, if you will. Like, yeah, like, like it's not in <laughs> California or anything. But... Right, like if we're talking like how many bands go through like, the Roxy to how many bands play like yeah anywhere in Baltimore it's it's obviously not really comparable uh, but yeah like you think about the bands from like Hermosa Beach and the bands from Baltimore <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but we definitely don't have the worst 
you yeah know, people still stop by <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah like ballyhoo was from here like bumping uglies so there's some there's some good bands like 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 skunk music <laughs> what skunk music sublime <laughs> just just sublime you're both 13 so you wouldn't be going to a lot of shows i suppose or is there some kind of like all ages gigs or or you oh, just, yeah, just sneak in the back there's all ages. <laughs> yeah I, oh I'd there say... there are a lot of all ages places yeah i'd say like where where we go you know like the shows that we go to it's like it's pretty cut and dry like it's not necessarily hard just because of our age and like i know both of our parents are totally into the same stuff which you know we're lucky for so it's never difficult to be like hey want to go to this show it's not like there's any convincing that has to be done yeah like, yeah sure you know so. <laughs> so that definitely makes it easier do you remember any gigs you went to bef- i guess before the pandemic that kind of uh stick out in your memory oh um yeah, I saw the uh I saw the descendants at um like not not this like little place, but it wasn't huge. And I remember I made my way to the front and I was like standing on the barricade to get a better look before they came out. And security walks over and I thought they were gonna say, like, no, you can't stand on that. But instead they grab a chair and they're like, sit right here, like next <laughs> to the stage. Are you okay? Yeah, and I, mean, um, I, I would say that one, or I saw like this really uh, tiny place called the Auto Bar. I saw Billy Joe Armstrong's band there, The Long Shot. Oh, is that his other like project? His little yeah, like a like a side project. So for people who don't know, he's the singer for from Man to Green Day. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's like as far as shows go, like I feel like everyone that I've gone to, like I haven't had like a bad show experience yet, you know, like I've enjoyed everything I've gone to, but mm. this one time I saw like the same band like twice in a month, they're called Water Parks, and I saw them at an acoustic show at like uh, a record shop, and then I like met them and everything, which was really cool, and then I got to see them like live, live, like shoulder to shoulder with people standing on a fence so that I could see over all the tall people. Oh. What kind of music do they do they play? There, I would just I would say like pop punk, maybe like that would that's like how I would describe it, pretty much. <laughs> One of the the fourteenth of uh, of December, twenty nineteen, was like just a backwards day for shows, uh, but in the best way possible. Um, I was supposed to see the Bouncing Souls. Um, they were playing this uh like acoustic thing at the uh, at the TLA. Well, the VIP thing was acoustic, and then they were playing a matinee. Um, it was supposed to just be a normal show, but then the, on the same day, the Misfits said, "Hey, we wanna we wanna play Philly on the same day as the Bouncing Souls." So the Bouncing Souls made it a matinee so they could go see the Misfits. Oh, cool. Um, we get out of the Uber because we had the VIP thing. Yeah. And all of the bouncing souls walk out of the door. Oh, cool. <laughs> They're like, "Oh yeah, we're on our way to go get some donuts." <laughs> <In the> picture. <laughs> so that was uh, that was great. We met the bouncing souls there, watched them play the acoustic show, and then we went to go see the Misfits. And it was like this huge arena that like people use hockey for, mm. and we were like all the way at the top. And this like dude in like a sweater vest and like a laminate goes, "Hey, you want some other tickets? They're for down there." We thought he was joking. We were like, "Sure." <laughs> we get there, they're very legit, and we're like, again, like sitting, like, like next to the stage again. <laughs> so awesome. that was that was fun. They they were that was in like Baltimore these these shows. Uh, that was in Philly. Oh, Philly. It's not too far away, is it? Like, like an hour's drive. Yeah, like like an hour or two. Yeah. Yeah. So back to your your podcast. I wanted to ask you, which episodes have you enjoyed the most so far? Like which, which guest and. That's a good 
hard yeah. question. Not to say, I don't <laughs> want you to say like, this is wor- this person was worse than this person. Just like, which one's kind of oh, like, yeah. oh, I really enjoyed that one. Um, of course, the Ian Mackay was, uh, the Ian Mackay one was really good. Um, I really liked um, our conversation with Atiba Jefferson. I liked that one a lot too. That's that was great. good. Of course, Doug Carrion. <laughs> yeah, it was great for multiple reasons, like before, during, and after. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed our interview with Stacey D. Yeah. Out. That was a great conversation. <laughs> Do you, do you find sometimes that you're surprised by the guest? Like you have a certain expectation and it's different to what you expect, but in a good way. Yeah, there have uh, been some times where just like, like nothing against them, but just like I don't want, like I'm just not in like a, like a podcast mood. And I'm like, I don't want to join the Zoom meeting. And I like, leave laughing (laughs) oh that's good yeah like we talk like after you know our interviews all the time just to like kind of talk about like how it went like whatever um and there's definitely times where like we're both kind of tired we haven't had like a great day we don't want to you know like be not the best we could so Mm -hmm. we're almost like nervous to join but like not because of the guests so i know Mm. that's always nerve-wracking but like Dominic said we come off and we're like in the greatest mood ever like it's just amazing (laughs) yeah I mean there's obviously anxiety there because like this person's giving up their time to to sort of you know be with you and do do the episode but but yeah I think trying to enjoy what you're doing is always important um I mean obviously with your podcast I was going to ask you is what are your sort of ambitions and and how do you see it going? What do you want to do with the podcast? Are you just letting it kind of happen and just enjoying the process? Um, yeah, I mean, it really just to like have fun and see what we can do with it. Just no real like goals, guests we'd like to get on, but not goals um like (laughs) when we first started it like i thought it was only gonna be like a month or two thing and it's been like better than i expected it to (laughs) yeah i mean i i don't want to sound cliche but like i don't think it i think it's lasted longer but the time has flown by like it doesn't feel like we're doing it for as long as we have Mm. but I would definitely say it's not like we have like specific like milestones like of course you know we want people like certain people like that we could get on we want to see how far we can take it but we always really just said as long as we're having fun and it doesn't feel like we're working like Mm. it doesn't feel like it's getting boring or like Mm. super stressful then like why not continue you know yeah but suppose if if you were being paid like a million dollars a week that would be nice like great yeah (laughs) yeah i mean we wouldn't complain (laughs) but like that's not like that's not a goal it's not like like, we're starting it to make a million dollars right like we don't want to make it seem like we're doing it because of that but i mean it's not like we would turn that down you know so i had the question for you because i wanted to ask this to some other people as well, but um, do you think it's wrong to profit from your art? No, if you if you enjoy doing it, then no. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't say wrong because like I, what I would consider like if this was but, like a career. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. No, you're fine. I was just gonna say like if this was like a career, then it's like you should be able to enjoy what you're doing and like still get paid for it. you know what i mean like if that's what people want to do that's fine you know what mm. I mean? yeah like but don't like buy a guitar to be a rock star like mm. yeah i mean like you, you start the podcast because you want to enjoy the podcast and it's fun for you but if you make yeah. a dollars here and there and nobody's complaining that's kind yeah. of like i think like we both agree like that's our standpoint like you know yeah. the guitar example Buy a guitar because you want to enjoy yourself and learn how to play the guitar. Yeah. So that you can be in, like, a stadium tour, you know? Yeah, and if you, like, 
I think skating, like skateboarding is a good example of it. Because there are a bunch of skateboarders who uh, like buy a board so they can get sponsored and they can get sent free stuff and they can get money from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, would that be nice? Absolutely. Mm. But don't, <laughs> don't skate for money. Don't right. do, like. I think that's starts... where, where the struggle is, is when someone's doing it for enjoyment and they're creating some art and then suddenly it becomes really popular and it's become like this commodity and people want to, you know, get, you know, buy things and merchandise and whatever. And it's like, but then this whole thing about selling out, you know, it's like, am I selling yeah. out if I commoditize my, my art, you know, turn it into a product? Yeah, I mean, I would understand where people are coming from in that sense, because that's definitely something to be scared of, you know, like, you never want to make it seem like just because, you know, like, you're making money off something, it's like, oh, we're popular, let's make merch, you know, like, yeah, but I, I think it's also okay to do that, because you want to make something like to give back to people and not necessarily to take from people. I think that's where it gets confused, because you shouldn't be making merchandise to make money off of it. You should make it because you want people to be able to enjoy it and like, yeah, share mm. that they both. Enjoy. I don't. I don't know if that's making sense, but yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, um, yeah, it's uh, because it. You know, I, I do think about like, like the guys from the kind of punk background and like Ian and stuff, and you know, I heard stories like Fugazi turned down a major record label because they don't want to sell out you know yeah i don't know if it's true but you know things like that it's like you know where does where do you draw the line between mm -hmm. uh, saying it's okay to make money from my music my art you know i'm not selling out um yeah and uh like going back to skateboarding i've seen a bunch of uh pro skateboarders who have gotten like mtv shows like Ryan Sheckler, like Margera, and um, like people throw the word sellout, like they throw that word around so much. I know you had you had Steve on, obviously. Yeah, that's something yeah. with Jackass. It was like that was just like a stupid like like video of them just being like idiots, but then it became this huge yeah. like huge show, and now it's just like a huge franchise, isn't it? So yeah in that so you just don't really know um yeah i mean i understand how sometimes it's difficult for people to see the line you know because like you, <laughs> you don't want to make it seem like you're only doing this for the money but i think it comes to a certain point when it's okay because you know if you want to expand what you're doing and that'll just make you happier and make you enjoy it more mm. i wouldn't consider that selling out like i would just consider that adding on to you know like what you were doing yeah yeah. Yeah. If you uh, <laughs> if you get your MTV show for doing this certain thing, but the TV show is about that certain thing, that's fine. But mm. if you stop doing your certain thing for this show, like yeah, I think that's selling out. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just taking an opportunity just because it's there and not necessarily because you want it. Like that's what I would mm -hmm. consider selling out. Like if you know, like back to the example, like if you got an MTV show because like you were really good at skateboarding and then the TV show was just about like following you around your house. Like, I feel like that's not, you know what I mean? Mm. Like if, if it's not based around what it was, I just feel like that is the only time it's like a little strange. Yeah, I yeah. guess it, there's a, there was, a, there was a lot of shows on still as still is a lot of shows about like voyeurism where it's like, someone there's literally just a camera following the family around in the house and people want right. to watch people yeah. want to watch that like they do want to like what yeah. the hell is chris lee knows best <laughs> all those kind of shows like like they had the one with the osbournes i don't know if you ever saw any clips yeah of that yeah. and that was you know it's very yeah i just found it um really strange but there's obviously something in that that it that it was it did become really popular and and people wanted that and i think that's a kind yeah, of a little yeah. bit how i'm thinking with the podcast it's like you you know you have to really kind of yeah i suppose kind of give the listener what they want yeah um otherwise you're just going to be talking to 
two people for a yeah, give, give the listener what they want, but at the same time, if it doesn't feel right, mm. don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that goes for, like, all branches of entertainment. There's Just like anything. Fine, yeah, there's, like, fine lines between everything. You know mm. what I mean? Like, if you give them, like, content that's relevant and, like, you know, like, you enjoy talking about, but not just just because it's relevant like it has to be both you know what i mean like, yeah. yeah yeah you have to enjoy the content you're making yeah in order for it to turn out well. yeah. yeah like we <laughs> we do our podcast for us if somebody else wants to listen to it great mm. right. awesome so <laughs> like, do you do you do you listen to feedback though do you like i mean do you of, yeah consider what people say and and like yeah i mean on on our comments like i I read every single one of those. Yeah, and I like I heart every single one of those. Like, <laughs> yeah, like we, we would never sit and like listen to the Is mine still low? I think mine's still low. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Okay, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we would never be like uh like whatever. You know, like we will listen to everything people say. Yes. It's just like we make sure that we're enjoying it. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's... like if people if people still listen but it doesn't become fun for us, we'll stop. If people don't listen but it's still fun for us, we'll continue. Yeah. Right, because yeah. In, in reality it's just conversations we're having with people and we just want to document them. And if people find yeah. it entertaining, mm. go ahead and watch. You know mm. what I mean? Like, <laughs> it is not it's not necessarily like a we have those conversations to post them. We have yeah. them we want to have them. And we just mm -hmm. post them because people find it entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like we, uh, to get to learn about your just favorite, like, musicians and, like, yeah, celebrities. I, th I think it's <laughs> the same for me. Like, I, I've got a background in music. I'm a drummer. Uh, I study music. Like, been playing, like, 17 years and been to all kinds of gigs and whatever. So it's like, you know, I'm talking about something that I'm passionate about, so that's that's pretty much yeah. that's the kind of foundation of your podcast is is that you you you're you're passionate about it you enjoy talking yes. about it otherwise what's the point you know yeah i think like you know like producing content in general is like kind of has that rule but i think you know with podcasts especially there's a little bit more freedom because it's not production based you know like it's just like yeah we set up a call ask people to be on it and that's just kind of how it happened so mm -hmm. like yeah. if you because, because it's like self-ran i don't i don't know if that's trying to make yeah sense, like if if you if you look at like like gamers and like people who do twitch streams and stuff like that mm -hmm. and who put their stuff onto youtube like they obviously love to play video games and they want like maybe to share that experience with others. So yeah. they put it on YouTube mm. and they're still doing that for them. Right. But if you look at people who are like, just doing like random ass shit, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like why? Like what's mm. the point? It, yeah, cause you can tell at some points, um, people like that that are just doing like random things, their content more becomes based on what the people watching mm -hmm. want and not necessarily what they want to do. And if mm. those two are like, linked you know with some people that's totally cool it's just it appears sometimes that they're not so yeah. then it's just kind of like concerning like we were talking you know like the comparison with like people who are gaming and stuff like that's great yeah like, you're enjoying that and you want to like give people that entertainment like that's awesome you know but, I mean? but at, at the same time like i've seen like people who used to like put up their games like and then they've moved into like like challenges it's always like like the challenges and stuff like that it, and if that's who are you want, doing that for yeah like <laughs> if, that's, if that's what people enjoy that's totally cool it's just like sometimes that content appears a different way but i mean mm -hmm. you know so like yeah them, that know? just makes me think of like xqc you know xqc the big youtuber you don't know him oh i thought he was i thought he was really famous in north america but yeah he's one of the big streamers uh, and he does all these reacts to videos. Ah. Like, like that's a whole kind of thing now on, on YouTube is mm -hmm. YouTubers doing these reacts to 
Um, I don't know if he, yeah. he wants to do it or that's just like, that is what. Yeah. And I mean, if you, like, I'll use Wilbur suit for, for example, uh, he does like Twitch streams and he does like react videos and he does like try not to laugh videos. But when you watch them, you can genuinely tell that he's having fun with it. Mm. Right. Like and he's they, putting it up to try to make somebody else laugh. Mm. Yeah. It's like when you watch videos like that, people are enjoying it. They're doing it with their friends. And it's just like they'd be doing this even if they weren't posting it. Yeah. But when you see people go out of their way to make things because they know they're posting them, that's mm-hmm. the only time it really becomes concerning because you like, you're just like, are you enjoying this? You know what I mean? Like, mm. yeah. You, you see people are actually enjoying like the create creative content they're putting out yeah so yeah. so going back to kind of music and stuff and do you guys actually play like any music yourselves are you are you like in a band or anything or um you in a are you in a fugazi tribute band or mind if right? <laughs> i wish i wish but um yeah i play uh bass drums and guitar um I, uh, I had like uh, some some people that I would play with, but it never really like went anywhere. Yeah, um, I've always wanted to learn to play guitar, but I play violin, so I'm like completely on the other end of what I listen to. You know, like I don't play stuff similar to what I listen to, so I guess mm. that's kind of interesting. Mm. But so I mean, I really enjoy it though. You know what I mean? Like I think it's because it's different from everything else. Mm. is the reason i like it so much if that makes sense so what kind of stuff do you, do you play just kind of classical stuff or i'm not so versed in the uh, world of yes yeah, those kind of instruments yeah um i take like private lessons like one-on-one with the teacher mm. so i just get like assigned things from like a book and then i i just play them you know like it it's not necessarily um, all based on what the music is. It's more so based on like the skills it's teaching me to continue, mm. you know? So it, it's like a growth thing. It's like the more, the pieces I learn that have more skills in them, I learn those skills and can use them on other things. That makes sense. <laughs> and yeah, yeah and I, th- I, think for, I think from going from violin to like bass or guitar, I think would be kind of easy the most difficult thing would just be like the picking yeah because there aren't frets on on violin right no there's just like finger positions which is like Mm. i guess the same thing but it's that seems so much more difficult yeah because you play in different positions so then you play in different keys so it's like this way where it's like you play this and this this way yeah like if you play if you play a C chord on guitar, it's gonna be the C chord every time. Yeah. yeah. But like it like violin to me, it just seems like you have to like like almost guess. I will admit there is some guessing. Um I like I definitely don't know everything there is to know. Um like like first position is just like here, but then you play third position with like your finger on like your first finger on like the third tape. Mm. So it's like Yeah, like to get that like every time. See every note right seems. But then, but then eventually you take the tapes off and you play from muscle memory. Yeah, that seems impossible to me. <laughs> I, 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 I just I just hit things. I just thump like like drum. <laughs> that's that's enough for me. I, I... So you you say Dom, you say you you you've been in a few bands. Are you gonna are you gonna start yeah. up a new? You're gonna get a something going after the pandemic, a new band going or. I, um, yeah, I know that the people that I played with before the pandemic are, are still open to it, but, um, still like right now there's no end in sight. (laughs) So at least where where we sit currently, there is necessarily that positive, like, oh yeah, this will be done in like a month, you know? Like, Hey, in March, do you want to come over and play some music? Right. (laughs) So we're just waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would I would love to play with those people again after the pandemic, but right now it just I see no end of pandemic. I know it's going to happen, but Yeah, we know. we've just gone back into full lockdown. Um Yeah. We never even like we never really had a lockdown. 
Yeah, we had phases where it's like if we got past mm-hmm. phase one, that but we'd get to like phase two, almost phase one. So yeah, I've heard mm-hmm. of places where you can't even leave your house. Yeah. Really? So I will say we don't have it the worst in any way, but... But at the same I, time, that's worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so strange, honestly, because... Um, you know, like people just aren't listening. I mean, it's just like that simple. Yeah. So some, some people still don't even believe that there's a pandemic at all. So mm. I think yeah. it's it's just really interesting trying to deal with that perspective. Uh-huh. That's that's the issue. You you have a lot of people who are kind of uh, we call them like the tin foil brigade, tin foil hat brigade. They believe that you know they're very much in the kind of conspiracy theories and. If, you know the government's trying to control us and, and yeah uh, yeah it's 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 um it's crazy man like like my, my yeah like my parents are my parents are from like the boomer generation like so they they kind of were born after the second world war and they've never really seen anything like this before in their, in their yeah lifetime. it just it feels like it's a series of events that you know uh-huh. like, like i calm down. <laughs> yeah i think it would be a great idea to go into like absolute full lockdown like people not even being allowed to leave their house but at the same time how do you enforce that i know i don't i don't feel like that's something anybody can enforce you know because like Mm -hmm. things happen you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like Mm -hmm. yeah like they they said that like you can go to the grocery store but that's it yeah i i think quarantine itself like just people not being outside as much i think has done like good things you know like and bad things it's definitely been difficult for people especially people who i guess don't have a lot of like technical outlets like places you know like to reach people Mm. i think it's been really difficult for but i think it's been a benefit for like our environment and you know just like people taking time to themselves because i feel like sometimes that's hard for people but it's important you know yeah relax and you know i feel like kind of taking taking from the way you did your, your first few podcasts asking a few kind of questions um so i wanted to ask you who is your musical idol um, the <laughs> in, in Mackay, the descendants and um maybe just yeah, an in, yeah, maybe yeah. just like an individual like one person who like uh yeah, probably probably Milo from the Descendants. Um I'm I'm between like two people. I probably have to go like Lydia Knight from the Regrets or um I I'm like a diehard Machine Gun Kelly fan. So. <laughs> I've I've heard of them. What kind of can you tell us a bit about Machine Gun Kelly because that's a great so, name. <laughs> his first his first, you know, music was like rap. Obviously, like, that was like his Colson Baker. <laughs> that was like his predominant genre. And yeah. then recently, over the summer, he released a uh, pop punk album called "Tickets to My Downfall," and he got a lot of attention because of that because he just like changed it. And you know, he did it with Travis Barker from Blink One Eighty Two. So I think it was like just because he changed the genre, the genre so quickly, and nobody really thought about it. Mm. You know, like that he mm. could do that genre of music. Mm. I think that's. That was cool. Oh. <laughs> and what about um I like this is the one question that I did I did really really like is what what was your this is the question that you asked was what what is your favorite interaction with a musician? Oh yeah. Ah. Uh, Which you might have already shared this, you know, in a previous episode but um Yeah, going back to the uh, show I talked about earlier, the Bouncing Souls show, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, I really enjoyed like um, m- meeting my water parks at like the acoustic show. That was pretty crazy. Um, but I kind of like like we were talking about earlier too. I kind of walked in there knowing that they were going to meet everyone after. Like it was still great to see, but it was yeah. Really oh, so, um, right? I I met milo at a at a filmage screening like i didn't know he was going to be there but mm. it, was in, it was in lancaster pennsylvania okay. and he drove from from delaware there and uh 
we had like already bought a ticket there uh, to go to the screening and like Milo was just there. <laughs> did you say yeah. hello? Did you say hello? That did you go and speak? Oh yeah, because I I was like I was like five or six at the time. Oh okay. And I, now I have a framed picture. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I was just going to say, I think one of like the best experiences was, so I went to see Palais Royale, which is like uh, another one of my favorite bands. And I kind of walked into it like I got like a general admission ticket, you know, I was in the back of the, the venue, I was just there to like listen to the music. And then at the end, they stopped and, you know, like they met everyone and like, so, mm -hmm. so meeting them was pretty insane because I met two of them prior to the show too like they were just outside mm. so i would say that, that was just crazy because it was the first time i'd ever like met musicians like that i was going to see yeah so i think that that was just crazy because it was it was surreal like i didn't go in there knowing that was going to happen i guess you could say <laughs> it's funny when you do meet people that you kind of idolize you're like wow they're just like, like hey they're cool yeah they're cool but it's like right. they're <laughs> just like people they're just like normal people like me like they yeah go, they go to the shop, right. they sleep. Free. They... <laughs> I, I think we forget, like, because they're musicians and, like, because we're paying to see them, that they're just people. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, they all started the same way we did. They went to school. They, they just decided to be a musician for, their, like, a career. And that's totally yeah. cool. It's just, they, it, just, it, they just happened to release some great albums. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was, um, I don't know if you've heard of a band called Battles. Have you heard of them? Um, so they're kind of like a alternative, I don't know, cause kind of like math rocky kind of stuff. Um, and I went to see them in Manchester in the UK and the, but one of the guys who's in that band was also in a band before called Don Caballero. They were like really, I think they were from Pennsylvania actually. And I bumped into the, the, uh, the guitarist and I was like, oh yeah, you're Ian Williams from Don Caballero and he just like he just stared at me and went yeah I was like <laughs> oh great and then he just walked off and it was like just stuff like that you know it's like <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't care that I knew that he was in another band called Don Caballero and it was just like such a kind of surreal um okay jarring moment I was like this guy doesn't give a I don't want to say but give doesn't give a shit what I like that yeah. I know that he was in this yeah. band and I was like oh that was interesting but um but <laughs> to me but to me yeah it was like I did kind of idolize him a little bit yeah um, and that's just funny though he was just like all right he was like yeah, yeah whatever <laughs> and <laughs> and he just walked up and I was like great man that's so cool um but yeah um and I guess the uh, the other thing would be about the the album. What what one album that you, if you were trapped in a room and and they said, we can, we'll let you listen to one album for the rest of your waking life. What do you want to listen huh. to? <laughs> I I I would probably say Milo goes to college, but mm. I'm assuming that I only get one listen to the album. Mm. So and that that record's only like twenty minutes long, so probably wig out at Danko's by Dag Nasty. Uh, personally, I'd probably go with uh, "Feel Your Feelings, Fool" by The Regrets because it's just like a variety, you know. What I yeah, mean? Like, it's not just like a get in the dance album, or it's not just this uh, like a crying album. Like you know, like it, it has variety in the sense that there's a lot of emotion. Yeah, like the like we got at Danko's isn't just like aggressive because we're punk. Like mm. right. it's yeah, like it's melodic. There's again like variety. Mm. So I, I I would say that record. See, if someone asked me, I'd be like a compilation album because then it's like you've just got to uh, you know you kind of it's like a touche kind of thing. It's like ah, oh, see, you want to yeah. pin me down to one album, but I'm gonna say a compilation, and then. I get to choose what I want to listen to. Well, <laughs> a playlist. Yeah. A playlist, yeah. A general playlist of music. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, I think would be, uh, I don't, do you know Radiohead? You must know, please yeah. say you know Radiohead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, the best, <laughs> the best band, I believe, 
I, I think that's come out of the UK, of Britain, Radiohead. Uh, but yeah, they, they released an album just at the turn of the millennium, so like 2000, uh, called Kid A. And that was like, yeah, for me, like the most complete. They're, they're kind of band that they're really good at out making albums and like complete albums and the whole concept of an album, you know. So yeah. that for me would be my choice, Kid A by Radiohead. Yeah. Your podcast is Bad Music Taste and Other Ways to Ruin Your Life. You're, you are on... Yes. YouTube. We're we're on uh, social media as a as bad music to his podcast. Yeah. Yeah, so. but on like Spotify and YouTube where the actual phonics. Where, <laughs> yes. where we can where we can go and listen to it or watch it. Uh yeah. so yeah, yeah, people check it out. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you so much. Um take care and good luck with the Absolutely. Stay safe. <laughs>